In this lesson, we're going to use Cartesian notation to add two vectors together. First, we'll get the two vectors into their Cartesian form, then we'll add them together, and then we'll get the resultant in both Cartesian form and in polar form. So here we have two vectors. These are both going to be velocity vectors because the units are in meters per second. So let's call this one v1 and this one let's call v2. So we have to get each of these into Cartesian form first so let's put that in. So here's our v1 and since we're going to break this into its components we're going to have the x component here the y component here. So this will be the cosine and this will be the sine because we're opposite this angle adjacent to this angle here for the cosine. So here for V1 we'd have 14.2 meters per second times the cosine of 37.0 degrees that would be in the I direction plus 14.2 meters per second times the sine of 37.0 degrees in the J direction. Notice that in this one we're both plus and plus because we're in the first quadrant so we're going to the right and up so we would expect our terms to both be positive. So if you do the calculation on that you'll get 11.34i plus 8.546j meters per second. Now just a brief note, I am carrying four significant figures here so that when I round to three significant figures at the end I won't have any rounding error. Let's do V2 now. So on V2 it is going to the left and down. So we would expect to have a negative term for the uh, x direction here and then a negative for the y as well. We're down in the third quadrant over here so we're going to have both terms will be negative in this case. So here we would have a negative 26.5 meters per second times the cosine of 18 degrees. You could also have, I'll just do this one time, you could also have 26.5 meters per second times the cosine of 198 degrees coming all the way from the positive x-axis to the vector. You don't have to put in the negative sign when you do it this way because the cosine takes care of itself. If you just use the angle as given, the 18, we have to supply the negative sign for it. So doing the same thing over here, we'd have 26.5 meters per second times the sine of 18 degrees in the J. This would be in the I over here. Likewise, we could just put this as a plus and then sine of 198. If we do the calculations on that, we get a minus 25.20i minus 8.189j meters per second. So those are our two vectors. Now we need to add them together. So we're going to get some type of resultant here. And so I'm going to call that v sub r, the resultant vector. Now at this point you might be wondering why would we add two velocities together. We'll get to that in a bit when we do relative velocities and we will be adding velocity vectors together. Before we start going through the math of it, let's just make a quick sketch because <clears throat> it's important to see, have some idea of where this vector is going to head. So if I have V1 out here like this, if we add them head to tail, V2 is coming back over here. Now, just sketching it, I don't know if my resultant is going to be 
into the third quadrant like this. It could be down here into the fourth quadrant, but it's going to be somewhere around here. So I need to, when I look at my um, answer here, this would be V sub 2, sorry, and this is V sub R. It could be in the, in the second quadrant or the third quadrant. I'll need to check that when I get the result, but it should make sense that it's going to be somewhere probably around this negative x-axis. So let's check that out. First, let's just write down our results again for v1 and v2. So I have 11.34i plus 8.546j meters per second. v2 is a negative 25.20i minus 8.189j meters per second. Notice I write them v2 directly under v1 so that I can add them together easily because what we're going to do is just add the i components and the j components to, together. So I add the i components, I get a negative 13.86i the, y, the J components negative, sorry, positive 0 0.357 J meters per second. So <clears throat> if I do my rounding to three significant figures here, my V sub R in Cartesian notation will be a negative 13.9 I plus 0. 357j meters per second. So that is one way to give the result. Now while we're on that, let's now decide where V sub R is. We have a negative x component and a positive y component, but the y component is much smaller than the x. So we're really coming over into here just barely above that negative x uh, axis. So my V sub bar is over here. So I am in the second quadrant. So when I get my angle, I'm going to get an angle from the positive x axis. And so it's going to be something just a little bit less than 180 degrees. So now let's get V sub bar in polar notation. So I need a magnitude and an angle. And so that's what we're going to get here. So to get the angle, or sorry, to get the magnitude, I'm just going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So we can have vrx squared plus vry squared. You're just taking the two legs of that vector, two components, squaring them and adding them together, take the square root, just using Pythagorean. If we have a three-dimensional vector with a z component, the Pythagorean theorem also works in three dimensions. So we take our components of the resultant vector and square those here and then get our result. And so we get a v sub r here of since it's so close, the x component just dominates that. So we have a magnitude of 13.9 meters per second. When we look at the angle, if I just use the formula, we would do something like this. The inverse tangent of v r y over v r x, because we're getting the opposite over the adjacent side. and so if you do that, we just put in our values here. We're going to get 0.357 over a negative 13.86. Come back over here. That gives us the inverse tangent of a negative 0 0.0257. Now when you put that into a calculator, what you're going to see is you're going to get a negative 1.47 degrees. That's because your calculator will only give you values in the first quadrant or in the fourth quadrant. 
okay so in this case what it's doing is it's giving us the value as if the vector was coming out this way so that's why we're seeing that negative angle there but what we really want is the angle in the second quadrant so to get theta we have to add 180 degrees to that and so we get here we get 178.5 degrees or rounding to our three significant figures we'll get 179 degrees so putting v sub r into polar form we could say v sub r is 13.9 meters per second at an angle of 179 degrees so this would be our other form of showing that resultant vector so pretty straightforward on how to add two vectors together you get your vectors all into Cartesian form add them together that gives you the resultant vector in Cartesian form and then you can go from there and get a magnitude and an angle just be careful and draw out that resultant so that you know which quadrant it's going to be in so you get the correct angle